So, yesterday, Stefan Molyneux made a video why moral relativism is bullshit. And I thought I would do a kind of video on Stefan Molyneux. Um, now, first of all, you know, I like Stefan Molyneux. I subscribe to him, and uh, I think he makes very good presentations. Um, he his, his main strength, I think, is reporting, um, uh, make, making presentations. He's very good at that. But as a philosopher, I think that's where he kind of fails, and I'm, this is why I'm bringing up last, uh, the last video I made, which is why moral relativism is bullshit. Now, before I begin, I am not a philosopher. I don't claim to be a philosopher. I am, however, a moral relativist. But um, here's the thing. So, Stephen Molyneux says, um, if moral relativism is true, then why don't we just tell... Why do we tell children off to... when they basically hit each other? Uh, why do we say, well, you, what you're doing isn't wrong when you're hitting another child? And um, I don't think he understands what moral relativism actually is. Now, there are some moral relativists that say um, anything is fair game. Now, and there is another um, form of moral relativism, which is a more common one, and that approach is basically uh, there isn't anything that's objective right or wrong. So, for instance, if uh, I kill somebody, it's not, it is not objectively wrong to murder somebody, it's not objectively immoral to murder somebody, but um, <clears throat> uh, but that there is some sort of, let's say, a route, a sort of route to get to some moral pr principles. So, for, uh, allow me to explain this. Let's say, uh, okay, so killing somebody isn't intrinsically wrong, but um, because there are certain scenarios where it is okay to murder somebody, or at least um, some people would claim that. So, for instance, going back in time to kill Hitler before uh, he whilst he was a child or something, in order to um, avoid, avoid him from um, exterminating the Jews, for instance. That's one idea. And there's a lot of those kind of um, caveats to morality. Now, um, the other approach is basically say, well... <coughs> the, so they basically, the approach is basically say, well, okay, so there may not be any ob thing objectively as right or wrong, but there is a kind of route to get there, like I said. So, for instance, um, <coughs> in the case of child abuse, well... The reason why child abuse is wrong is because we can empathise with the other person and there's a part of us which thinks, well, um, in, in a world where everybody is hitting each other, I could be hit. So there's a sort of selfishness, there's a sort of, it's kind of linked, anchored, if you will, uh, to our uh, selfishness and our, and our preservation to survive and replicate our genes, for instance. Uh, so that's just, so I think he gets that wrong and um, uh, I think he also, he has a, a tendency to miss these kind of things. I don't know if he does it on purpose or if he just doesn't know his philosophy right. Because there is... Um, I know he's, his credentials are not as solid as he makes them out to be. So, for instance, he says that he has a master's in philosophy, um, which is, I think, was technically true, but um, I think there was a Philosophy Lines, his YouTube channel, basically found out that, yes, he does have a master's, but the person who marked his thesis didn't actually read it. Uh, he just passed it along and gave it a first or something. So it's a bit deceiving. And um, th then there was the whole determinism thing. He, I don't think he gets determinism either. I think um, he, he keeps going down this analogy of, well, what about rocks falling down and uh, f rocks falling down a cliff and um, and how can we have a, preser um, a, a preferred def uh, destination or something? Which uh, he doesn't seem to understand that our desires are also determined um, some way or another. But, of course, Stephen Molyneux has to believe in an objective morality, and the reason for this is because he bases his theories on the non-aggression principle. Now, there are a number of problems with this. Um, it's pretty clear to understand why. Uh, I think the best way to describe the problem with the non-aggression principle, and I think he kind of acknowledges it, but kind of... It, you see, Stephen Molyneux is a bit like a fundamentalist, and I think that's probably the best description for him, and that is a non-aggression principle fundamentalist. He's basically substituted religion and the Ten Commandments and uh, the Bible for the non-aggression principle. And uh, it doesn't work for a number of reasons, um, pretty clear. The first reason is that, um, and I think, I remember, I think he was, he was doing a video, and um, he, he was saying about how someone presented him a problem, of, well, what happens if somebody buys all the land outside your property and then extorts you? And Stephen Molly was like, and this is pretty close to what he said, he was like, hmm, well, things are so bad right now, um, you know, th th that was basically his uh, retort. And the thing about that is, um, it doesn't, 
by doing that, he's basically saying, well, no, no amount of criticism, no matter, no matter of arg, no, no amount of arguments rather, will persuade me otherwise. No amount of evidence, no matter amount of research. And if, if you present him, if you present him, oh, um, there'll be an apocalypse if we went down the road non-aggression principle. He will say, well, things are just bad right now, and that's what a fundamentalist kind of does. And um, I think there was another one as well. Uh, that's right. Uh, what he did was, uh, he was talking about, I think he was talking about, uh, right, he was talking, when people say, well, what do we do without the roads? What, how do, you know, what do we do in a post, um, in a libertarian society? How do, what does it look like, basically? And um, he says, well, can you imagine what it would have been like telling people what it would be like after slavery? And that's kind of a nonsensical argument in itself, because uh, slavery was not a de facto means um, it, it, you know slavery doesn't exist in the Pleistocene for instance so um, you know that's again it's a bit deceptive either it's deceptive or it's just not very or it's just kind of stupid so yeah overall I don't know what Stefan's game is I think I I, I heard somewhere an explanation it was from a postmodernist um, I've, I've read it in a postmodern book and I know there's mixed feelings about postmodernism and um, they write a lot of jargon but I kind of agree with one principle that I heard, and uh, that was like the idea that in the modern day world with so many choices, like for instance consumer brands, etc., uh, ways to live your life, there's a sort of uncertainty, and uh, that uncertainty can result in a sort of fundamentalism, a sort of a longing to return to the past, a, 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 longing, a longing to be told what to do, and that's why fundamentalism is on the rise. Uh, and I think there's something to that, and I think. Stefan Molyneux has basically substituted religious fundamentalism with libertarian fundamentalism. So that's all I've got for today. Um, thanks for listening.